I want to kind of tell you what the Lord has done, if you don't mind. So then we, we can praise Him better, right? I'm going to tell you something. The love I've seen from unbelievers has shaken me. I, I, I don't know how, how, how else to say. These people are so dedicated to doing their job. It's really moving. Very, very moving. I didn't tell you any of this when, when I got on the screen with you. But, um, you know, I've had such an amazing few weeks, really, and an amazing time the last few days because I've been ministering on, on Skype. Uh, I've, I've preached to already about 20,000 people the last two weeks. Huh? What? 25,000 people. On Skype. So I thought, man, this is the way to go. <laughs> if you can't show up, just go on Skype. I can see you, you can see me, and I don't have to smell you, you don't have to smell me. <laughs> just see each other. <laughs> it's going to be fun tonight, okay? No, you know, I was, I was introduced to, to a group of people the first night that was very... Uh, shocking in a good way. I get to the to the doctor's office. That was March twentieth, to be exact. My girl, uh, precious Jessie, came and took took charge. Boy, did she take charge! Jeez, she took my cell phone from me. She won't let me have it. She just very controlling girl. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm not her husband. Anyway, she she. <laughs> She took everything away from me, and <laughs> which was good. She said, "No emails, no texts, no nothing. You're that's it." I'm sitting in the doctor's office. That's March 20th, and this amazing. And I want to emphasize, amazing Filipino doctor. He comes and grabs me by the hand and just won't let go, and became tearful. You know, little tears began showing up. He said. It's very serious. He said, you, are, you're, you must go now to, to the hospital. He said, we're going to put you in ICU immediately. I thought, oh my God, I'm dying. And, and he told me what was wrong with me. And he said, your heart rate is, do, is now, right now beating 200 per minute. And we got we to gotta control it. And he said, it looks like your heart is enlarged substantially, and we don't want you dying. He said, it's very dangerous right now. So I grabbed his hand, and I said, doctor, and I, I just met him, just, just met the guy. I said, doctor, don't let me die. And he, be, he, he began weeping. He said, I promise you, I will not let you die. Just pray for me. Just pray grabbed my heart. It was so moving. And I almost cried because I'm thinking, dear God, you know, this could be it, you know. They rushed me into emergency and suddenly these nurses running around all over the place. And this guy, this doctor, was just another amazing man who was in charge of the, of, of the, uh, of the you know, ER area. He came, began talking to me just to make me laugh and he was telling me jokes and and told me he knew who I was and such things. He, he just sent me a letter a few days ago. He said, I'm sending you this just to see how you're doing. He said, I'm, I'm not asking for anything except one thing. Wanted to make sure you're okay. Just amazing. The nurses were beyond belief. I mean, six days in ICU and a, one extra day, I was in a normal room. And I, I'm here to tell you... Um, I'll never see the world the same way again. I'll never see unbelievers the same way again. Because those guys saved my life. And I'll tell you, medical science is amazing. You know, Catherine Kuhlman used to always say, if God does not heal you, pray for the best doctor. And go and pray that God will use his hands. Well, that's what happened with me. And Dr. Tian Sung is the, is the man's name. Really, uh, e even that was amazing how I found him. 
for three weeks, I was home uh, right after Brazil. Couldn't I? Uh, you, I, I know you won't, you won't believe this because you, you see how strong I am and energetic. I could not walk from here to the camera without losing breath. I could not shower. I could not shave. I could not even, even eating became a challenge. Brushing my teeth. I'm thinking, man, what's wrong with me? Because everything became hard. And I was, you know, fatigued very quickly. And I'm thinking, you know, what's, and I, you know, you think at first it's in your mind. But I could hardly walk and breathe properly. It was really scary. Well, anyway, so I'm, I'm in the hospital on, on the 20th, and they started working real hard. And this guy <laughs> comes into ER. He's trying to make me laugh and all that. And it was so, so precious. And then they, they put me in and, and, and began working on first draining me. I did not realize my lungs were filling up with fluids. I didn't realize my organs <laughs> were shutting down. I didn't realize my heart was filling up with fluids. Because see, when your heart beats at 200 beats a minute, your body doesn't have the chance to have the right oxygen and so forth. Because, and they explained this to me. They said it's like running in a marathon and, you, and, you, and you're not stopping. You know, eventually you'll collapse. And the doctor said, he, he said, had you waited one more day, you would not be sitting here. I said, you mean I'd be dead? He said, well, I, I'm not going to say that. But, but he said, it would not have been good. So now they start working on me. They start draining me. They start giving me all the meds uh, real fast, in, in, still in ER. And uh, they put me in, 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 uh, in, the, in the room after about two hours. There I am in you know, ICU. That was a little hard because you know, beep here, beep there. Uh, you can't really rest. Uh, they come in every few minutes and do this and do that. And, and they were taking my blood pressure every <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> Literally. I mean, I had that thing around my arm. Well, anyway, so here I am. And, and then they put me in, in the room. And uh, the, the next day, these girls come in, these nurses. They were so cute. They said, listen, they said, we need to put this wire uh, up your arm down to the heart. So I was freaking out, you know. I said, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> they said, you're going to just feel a little pinch. And they, you see this long wire. They put it up my arm, down my chest, into my heart. I didn't even feel it. Nada, as they say in Spanish. And they began doing whatever they are they, they do through that, and it was really quite an amazing experience not to feel any discomfort or any pain. But then the next day, they began all the tests. They said, we have to eliminate what we, we think you don't have. And slowly they began to do all that. And they came first with bad news. They said, your heart is enlarged, a congestive heart failure. Uh, it's operating at 20%. Oh, Jesus. That's what they told me. They said, your heart at this point is only at 20%. They said, we, we have to do what we have to do. I said, look, do whatever you have to. So, but the medications they began to really give me were tremendous and, and helped me immensely. I'm still on them, thank God. But they, they went in the next day. I mean, I'm amazed, to be honest with you, at the new medical breakthroughs. They put that thing down here, and it goes up your, your body into your heart. Yeah. And they looked in my heart and everything. They put a camera down my mouth to check for whatever, you know, especially, uh, you know, anything like uh, uh, um, blockage and such. Like, no, no, not blockage. What, what, what do you call the little? Huh? No, it's okay. It's okay. Blood clots. Blood clots. Because they, were, they, they, they wanted to shock me, and be, be for that, they wanted to make sure that a blood clot wasn't there that could be released. So they put all this stuff in me. They said, if there's blockage, we'll put those uh, you know, stints in there. We, we, they were all ready for it. 
I was freaking out a little bit because they asked my children to leave the room, and all the nurses came in to the ICU. That room was jam-packed with, with the nurses all looking, and I was thinking, man, I'm dying. <laughs> and they, they took, they unplugged whatever they unplugged, made, made my heart start running again. I was freaking out, and uh, dear Tian Sun grabbed my hand. He said, it's okay, it's okay. And then all I heard is, let's go. And then, bang, I'm gone. I was totally gone. And when they, when they woke me up, which was quite an amazing moment, <laughs> It was actually funny, but anyways. <laughs> I woke up singing. <laughs> I was singing uh, Christian songs. I was praising the Lord. <laughs> it was really awesome. My, my, my daughter and Michael were freaking out because they, they said, the Bible is coming out of you. You were praising the Lord as you came out of your... Uh. Well, anyway, so they, they came in. They said, listen, we have good news for you. They said, your heart has no plaque. They said, it's, it's as clean, it's as clean as a 20-year-old. Must be doing something right. So I said, well, that's great news, but I said, it's still enlarged. They said, don't worry about it. You know, you, you're going to live. It'll be okay. And they began, of course, doing all the other things. It's been a, a, a remarkable journey. Uh, a lot to learn, of course. A lot to, life itself has changed for me. And and um, I want to live. Uh, I want to live a, a productive life now for the Lord. You know, when you come face to face with death, something happens to you. I don't care who you are, something wakes up inside of you. I'm going to understand what I said, because you realize, I don't have much time. You r you also realize how frail you are, how fragile life is you also realize how much you need support. And uh, the support I received from preachers, especially preachers this time, was really has been overwhelming. They, they all called, everybody called, even uh, uh, the guy from Singapore, uh, Joseph Prince, he called, everybody called. He said, we're, we're praying for you. Please know we're praying. Jack Hayford told me yesterday on the phone, he said, he said, my wife wants you to know she loves you very, very, very much. I said, you know, Pastor Jack, it's so touching. He said, I, you know, he, he said, well, we've been wanting to come and see you. I said, well, thank you, but, you know, I'll come see you instead. But the thing is, uh, it's been so precious. Jan Crouch called. Uh, she, she kept calling every day. And finally she got through uh, talking to my daughter. And she said, Benny, I I'm praying for you right now. She said, Let, let's pray. And she began praying real strong on the phone. She said, that's exactly what, ha what happened to Paul. His heart went down like that. And it was operating at 10% in his case. But sadly, he was not able to recover. We all miss him very much now. But saints, life is beautiful. <laughs> Enjoy it. Don't waste it. Don't mess up. Don't drink and don't smoke. I'm serious. If you smoke, stop it. If you drink, stop it. Do not abuse this beautiful gift God gave us. Your body is a gift from heaven. Are you listening? Yes. You, 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 you know, I came to talk to you tonight, just heart to heart. God has given you a precious gift. Life is a gift. Your body is a gift. Think about the amazing body you have. Amazing body that heals itself. Just give it what it give your body what it needs. Just eat well, sleep well, rest well, and please go for a walk every day. Go look at the flowers. Go, go, go just enjoy the sunshine. Go look at people and, and, and enjoy the way they look, even if they don't smile. <laughs> Everything is beautiful in this world. I've changed. Can you tell? Because, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to see that side of death again. I'm going to tell you something that I was not going to share because it puzzled me and bothered me. 
Right before all that happened, I had a dream. In the dream, I was uh, sleeping in this condominium. Beautiful condominium with a long hallway. And I was sleeping next to my mother. And suddenly the lights all came on in the condo. They had been off. We were sleeping. And I got up, and, and as I looked, I saw a spirit, a demon spirit coming towards me. The demon spirit was very strong, very powerful. I, of course, um, didn't understand at the, at, at the time who that spirit was. I'm convinced now it was the spirit of infirmity. He walked in, this big, massive monster almost, he walked in. I didn't see his head or shoulders or arms or hands. I saw the armor he was wearing. And the armor on him was the front part was um, leather. But he was dressed in black. And I began to rebuke him in Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I was not afraid at all, amazingly. I didn't feel any fear. The spirit, whatever it was, didn't try to attack me, thank God. I wanted to take a chair and throw that thing at him, my chair. And I just was uh, quite shaken by the fact he was there. And then he, he stood kind of halfway and didn't move. And right after that is when, when all this happened. At first, I thought it was this, you know, death. But my son-in-law said, Bob, he said, that's the spirit of infirmity. And when, I, when he said that, I felt it. And he said, you were trying to throw your chair at it because that's your office. Yeah. Bonky came to see me, and Bonky gave me a powerful word from God. I mean, he flew in all the way from Florida to tell me this. He said, I have a word for you. He said, the Lord told me to tell you, you're going through a storm. The leaves on your tree are falling, but the fruit is multiplying. And I said, I said, what do you, I said, what do you think it means? He said, I don't know. You should ask God. He said, but the fruit is what's important. He said, the fruit remains and the fruit will grow. And then he said, and remember, springtime is coming. He said, the, the leaves will fall on every tree. He said, we all lose leaves, the trees. But he said, springtime is coming. He said, be ready. God is about to totally transform your ministry. He said, you're going to be... You're going to be ministering in a way you've never ministered before. You know, I am very calm. I really am. I'm just like calm. Nothing bothers me anymore. And the doctor said, no stress. <laughs> so he said, be careful with stress. I said, okay, no stress. Let me tell you a few things I learned. But before we do, because I really have <sighs> the Bible has become so near and dear, you know, you, you become so attached to the Word of God at times like that. And uh, I've read Genesis 1 through 1 Kings 22 in 35 days. Can you imagine that? I just went through the Word like that. And, and uh, it's been really precious. So let's stand and let's thank Him for His mercy. And I want to have uh, Gregory lead with give thanks with a grateful heart. And just thank him right now for life. Lift your hands and thank him for your life. Thank him for the beauty he's given us to enjoy. Thank him for the sunshine and the rain. Thank him for the earth and the beauty he's allowed us to see daily. And especially thank Him for salvation. His precious salvation. Precious Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. 
We give you praise. Okay, Gregory, it's all yours. Give thanks with a grateful heart. We give thanks to the the Holy One. We give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. Precious Son gives thanks. We do, Lord. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Lift the voice. Deserve the glory and the honor. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. All the glory. We thank you for your mercy, your amazing, amazing love, and your wisdom, and how you've shown us your wisdom, your perfection in every way. Touch our hearts tonight, our lives tonight, in a very special way. Let us walk out of here, Lord, with renewed minds. Well, we would never see life the same way again and see your beauty. In Jesus' name, and God's people said amen. amen. You may be seated. Bless your hearts. We'll worship again later on, I promise you. Jesse, my daughter, called. She said, Daddy, she said, don't forget to tell the people that when you left the hospital, those nurses were crying and cheering. I said, baby, I remember that.
She said, you don't remember some of the things that happened because you are out of it. But she said, those nurses were coming in with tears in their eyes looking at you. Not one of them. We didn't talk about politics. We didn't talk about religion. We didn't care to. Not one of them uh, treated me in any negative way. They, they all call me pastor. They all knew who I was. I said, do you watch me on TV? They said, no, we're too busy. <laughs> we work too much. And I almost wanted to ask, why are you so nice to me? Ponytailed hippies, some of them looking like hippies. One guy named Scott with a ponytail. He was incredible. That's incredible. He would come in and check on me and tap me on the shoulder and said, I'm so happy you're doing better. and I don't want to see you back here again. Please stay home. <laughs> and it's time for your medication. <laughs> Another guy from Lebanon, he was full of faith. He, I said, oh, my Lord. I said, the doctor just told me that my heart is working at 20%. Oh, he says, don't worry about it. He said, my father's heart is working at 10%, and he walks on the, on the beach every day. <laughs> he said, just don't worry about it. He said, he said your heart will, will fix itself. Just give it what it wants. Yeah, quite wise, you know. He said, my father is like a horse. <laughs> but when I was leaving, and I got to tell you this, because you know, it, it, when we were singing, give, give thanks, I was so thankful to the Lord for this. When I was leaving the hospital, I wanted to go hug the, hug the nurses, all of them, the girls and the guys. And there were three men, and the rest were all women. And I, they wheeled me in a wheelchair because they won't let you walk after they take you out, you know. I said, please, please, I said, take me back. I want to, and as I came to those nurses, they all began weeping and hugged me and kissed me. And so I was so happy you're doing well. And I, I'm telling you, I mean, I don't know how else to say it. It's like the scales have come off my eyes. There's a there's a precious people out there, dedicated people. It's not nice to attack them. It's not nice to say nasty things about them. We just don't know them, do we? We 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 don't know. You know, I didn't care about uh, about anything. I didn't care to talk about politics or what church do you go to or. You know, do you read your Bible, or are you a Christian? I thought to myself, you know, yeah, I can do it. But they're, they're acting beautifully. They're acting like Christians should act. They're loving like Christians should love, you know. And it was, pri it was just priceless. So I'm leaving the lobby. Now, this is all happening down here at uh, Mission Hospital. That's where I went. That's the best hospital in Southern California. <laughs> Putting in a little ad for them. I'm telling you, they're incredible. They just bought Hogue. Hogue now is run by Mission. Yeah. So it's like one company. And uh, Mission started with, uh, with uh, Catholic nuns. It's a Catholic hospital. And what I liked about it is... On the screen, they were rotating things from the Bible. It was so precious, right in the room. You know, about the healing Jesus, the healing Savior. And I'm thinking, I can't believe this. Right on that laptop, there was a big a computer deal there. On the wall, I mean. It looked like one of those screens, like not, not as big as this one, but about half the size. And rotating... Uh, Bible uh, information, and I'm thinking, dear God, God brought me to the right place. And there was a cross and everything. But the beauty, you know, of, of, of having to wake up to reality. How many know what I just said? Reality is, this is a beautiful world. I, I, I know I'm saying it too much, but you know what? You cannot say that even enough. This world is beautiful. Everything about it is beautiful. 
I think sometimes when we, when we are, we get so busy in life, we ignore the small things. And I remember a doctor telling me in Florida, he said, listen, he said, every so often you just need to go stand by the lake and look at the water. He said, you will, he said, you live longer. Every day now I go down to the beach and I just walk. And I love it. Let me spend a few moments with you and talk about healing. We've been talking about healing and it was, you know, many of us, take your Bibles out. Many of us need to remember how important our body is to God. Your body is the temple, the house that the Holy Ghost lives in. And we, we all must treat this body and care for this body with elegance. I really want to really get through to you tonight. I hope I will. The, the reason people get sick, number one, is because sickness came as a result of the fall of man. Sickness is uh, in this world because of the fall of Adam. We should not be surprised that sickness is a part of life because sin is a part of life. We don't want to talk about what's happening on earth today because it's not pleasant. But every bit of it is the, is the result of sin. The reason there's the ISIS groups and the Al-Qaeda's and the terrorists and all that we hear on TV is because of sin. Sin is the cause of all the destruction and all the death that is that is around us. But the beauty is God has given you and I a promise. And the promise is our healing. The promise is abundant living. The promise is peace that passeth all understanding. The promise is peace, permanent peace. He said, come on to me. I'll give you rest. He didn't say go to an altar or to a preacher. He said, me, I'm your, I'm your, I'm your answer here. Right after I, I, I came out of the hospital, I was home. And I, 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 I had a frightening experience one day. Uh, I felt uh, I was choked, being choked. And uh, it was really frightening, and I didn't, I didn't want to sleep. And I kept grabbing Suzanne's hand just to feel comfort. Thank God she was there. And I prayed Terry McCallum all day and all night for weeks. And then I had a dream where I saw myself prostrate before Jesus. He came into the room, and I, and I went over and, and I knelt. And there was such peace in my heart. There were two people with him. I don't know who they were. But from there on, everything changed. Everything changed. And the presence of Jesus became so real at that moment. I began to just worship him and sing. I sing praises to your name. And I was crying. And just the tangible presence of God was so rich. Then everything in me knew. All is well. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So then, you know, I, 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 I began asking questions in my own heart. Why did that happen to me? What is it I did that I did not pay attention when I did it? And frankly, I came to the conclusion, I worked myself too hard. I was preaching so much. All of January, I was gone. Nearly all of February, I was gone. I, I didn't take any breaks at all. I didn't want to stay home. I did not want to stay home. Uh, 
when I was in Puerto Rico. I was sick in Puerto Rico. I had an infection in my in my ears and had uh, vertigo <laughs> in the car, you know. <laughs> and then I, I preached the next the next night. I told Greg, I said, I can't hear anything. I said, I can't hear the music. And it because my ears were were blocked and they, they didn't unplug when we landed on the plane. Remember that? And 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 then I would go over and say, you know, I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. Pray for me. That was in Puerto Rico. Right here, when we were here the last time, I could not hear the instruments. Didn't I tell you that? I told Pam, I said, pray for me, guys. I can't hear anything. And what happened is, and, you know, you learn this stuff about your ears. Like, that's why I've, I've said to you, we're, we're, we're created in an amazing way. Your ear has many levels. And one of the levels is for the higher sounds. And it, it, it plugged on me. It, it, it went out. So I could hear myself talk. And I can hear you talk if you're talking, you know, like clear. But I, I could not hear any, any music. I couldn't hear any of the singing. I was singing by myself, hoping they would all follow me. You know, it was weird. It was scary. So I came home from Puerto Rico, and now I'm hit with this, <laughs> I couldn't breathe. And I was coughing, 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 coughing every day, real bad. And I'm thinking, what's wrong with me? Like, why can't I do things? That I, I've, you know, here I was in, in Brazil running around and preaching, and now I can't even go to my shower? I can't even go and brush my teeth without, you know, going out of breath. It's just craziness. But the fact was that I didn't pay, pay, pay attention to, to this gift God gave us. And, and I am, you know, maybe not 100% sure of this, but I am sure of the fact over time I ignored this right here. And, it, you know, it caught up with me catches up with you. God cannot heal you if you're fighting the laws of nature. He will not heal you. You have to cooperate with heaven to receive healing. It's no different than sin. Sin will destroy you if you allow it. Sin is a powerful force on this earth. You know, tonight I just want to talk to you, just heart to heart, just get it through to you. Sin is a powerful force on this planet. And it comes at you from every direction. To pollute your mind, to pollute your life, to pollute your walk with God. And the only way to be free from it is to continually cleanse the wick of your mind. Cleansing the wick because the wick picks up the dirt. Comprende? It's like a candle. It'll burn, but if the wick is not cleansed, the light will go out. So that's how you renew your mind. We renew our minds daily through the scripture. To keep ourselves free from dirt. So we can live a life free from sin. And the Holy Spirit cooperates with us when we give Him control. And we cannot give Him control until we understand that the spirit of life hath made me free from the spirit of death. Sin and death. I need to let the Holy Spirit do His work. But the Holy Spirit cannot do His work unless I ignite the spirit man through the Word. The Word of God ignites the power of God. Without the Word, I can have no power in my life. Think about gasoline and a car. You cannot use the car unless you turn on the engine. When you turn on that engine, it ignites the power. 
So now your, your car starts moving, and the gasoline starts going into the engine. Well, same thing. The Word of God is the key that ignites the power of the Holy Ghost. If, if, if that's one thing you learn tonight, it's, it's worth coming. This precious Bible ignites the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And this precious Bible has to fill your mind on a daily basis because your mind is getting filthy on a daily basis. Your mind is picking up dirt every day from every direction. If you allow this dirt to build up, the light will go off. That's why the priests had to come in and cleanse the lampstand continually. So the oil can flow continually. So the Word of God is that key. Please hear me, I beg of you. We cannot ignore this precious Word. And when the Word of God gets in your stream, in your system, in your thought life, it's a process. You cannot see the change in 24 hours because that's just not the way it works. The change comes slowly. And, and, and you have to cooperate with God and receive the Word. And don't rush through it. If you miss a chapter, go back and reread it. The Holy Spirit will not work with you if you rush Him. Give Him time to make the changes necessary in your heart and life. Give Him the time to work. And after that, you're going to see the change that He will produce in your life. And, and, and finally, really, I mean, it's so simple. So, 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 so simple. Once the Holy Spirit works, He will guide you to the Master. Begin to learn the practice of the Master's presence on a daily basis. And I promise you, in no time, everything will turn around in your life. The, the peace will come back, and the contentment will come back. The beauty will come back into your life, and the stress level will go down, and the crazy stuff will stop, will stop happening in your life. And peace, peace comes in. You just need to let the, the Holy Spirit do His work. Now, very quickly, healing. It's a promise of God, unbreakable, unshakable, unmovable promise. Just because you go through challenges in life, just because sickness may come your way, it doesn't mean the promise is empty. It simply means that you have to go after it now. Seek the, the, the blessed promises of God in your life. And you, you, you do it so with such ease, really, when the Word of God is, is already there, working. So I began going through the Scripture, and then I, I, I noticed something that I preached about. The power of the cross of Jesus Christ. We don't know if it's true or not with Helena, you know, when, when she went looking for the cross of Jesus in Jerusalem, she, she found three crosses under the garbage. And she said, well, the only way I can tell which one is the real cross is if, 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 if the sick will be healed. It's the only way I can tell. And, and God honored that. And she took the first cross and laid it on the sick. Nothing happened. The second one, nothing happened. But when she laid the third cross, bang. People were getting healed. She said, that's the real one. And then finally, so I said, Lord, you know, teach me more about this. I want, I want to know more about this. And the Lord really spoke to me. He said, begin to have communion every day with me. Every day, he said, don't miss. And as I began to take communion each night, I'm telling the Lord, now, Lord, the cross brought healing to the multitudes. Bring healing to me. The cross brought healing in Numbers 21. Let me experience that. 
the cross stopped the plague in number 16. Let the plague in my soul and body stop. And as I did that every day, I began to see results. Now, I did something else I got to tell you that the Lord really shook me up with. He said, if you want me to heal you quickly, he said, read Psalm 41 right now. So I'm, I opened Psalm 41. And my eyes glued, he will make his bed in his sickness. Blessed is the man who considers the poor. And then there are seven promises there. Incredible promises. And the Lord said, well, are you going to do it? I said, yes, sir, I will. Oh, this is so precious and priceless. Are you people enjoying this? Yeah. If, you, if you're not, I am. <laughs> Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord, here's the first promise. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Number two. The Lord will preserve him. Number three. And keep him alive. Number four. He shall be blessed upon the earth. Number five. Thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. Number six, the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. And number seven, thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. And that grabbed me, that God will heal me. I said, Lord, what must I do now? He said, you know what to do. I went immediately online and I called Donnie Price. I said, Donnie, find me now, now, 25 orphans, now. I, wanna, I want 25 orphans. I want their names. I want their pictures. I want the information on them. I want to support 25 orphans. He said, why 25? I said, because I want to start with 25. He called um, Compassion. It's called Compassion. It's a, it's a, it's a Baptist organization. He sent me the link. I go online, and I see these children's beautiful pictures. One touched me real deeply from Indonesia. A little girl who's been waiting for a sponsor for like two, three months. And, uh, and others from different. I said, listen. I said, get me the, the worst cases. Get me the, the ones that need help now, because I need help now. And he sent them to me. I called the office immediately. I said, start sending those checks. And, and when I made that decision, when, when I began taking communion, and I made that decision, something happened in my soul. Do you people feel what I just said? Something happened to me. I began to feel stronger. I began to feel like I'm myself again. My son <laughs> and Tim, they're back there, had to carry me up the stairs every day because I couldn't walk up the stairs. Now I'm walking up by myself, down by myself. The therapist came. She said, you don't need me anymore. She said, you can go on by yourself. I said, let's, we go down walking on the, on the beach. And this dear girl said, you, you don't need me. I said, well, thank the Lord. She said, if you, if, if you need me, just call me. I said, no, no, I'm doing fine. But I'm telling you people, the strength came back when I obeyed the word. It ignited the power of the Holy Ghost in my soul. Anybody listening? Yes. Now, the cross became a daily, I had daily contact with the work of the cross. Hear me out. Daily contact. That's the secret. And I began to take communion daily. You that are sick, you don't need to be sick anymore. Just let the shadow of the cross of Jesus cover you. And that happens as you practice that. As you remind the Lord of... Because see, when you remind Him then it becomes real to you. And, and Jesus did not say, uh, think this in remembrance of me. 
He said, do this. Therefore, we have to rehearse it to ourselves. Do this mean practice it. That's why the Jews eat the Passover and remember the Passover by the foods they eat. So they eat herbs and such things and matzah and all that to remind themselves of the, of the sorrow they went through. Passover. I'm watching because I have so, I, you know, so much time now that I love it. Yeah, I'm getting back on the road, but in time. But I'm watching the heritage by Abba Eben. The history of the Jews. Oh, my Lord. When he began talking about the Passover, I came unglued. The beauty of the Passover, the beauty of what the Jewish people experienced at the Passover, the power that was released at the Passover, all there on that video, on the DVD. They would not have come out of Egypt without it. They would not have seen healings and miracles without it. Are you people listening? That's the power of Calvary, the power of the cross. I came to tell you tonight there is untapped power in your life. Tap it in. Grab it. Take hold of it. Get to know what the Scripture says, because that ignites the power of God. But get to know the power of the cross. Come under its influence, under its shadow. Let the cross begin to influence your thoughts and your life by that daily communion. That's what, what happened to Roy Harden when Roy was dying. And, and he began taking communion daily. And to his amazement, his, his kidneys began to work and his liver began to work. And his color came back and his hair grew again. It was amazing. He told me, he said, he said, Benny, he said, you don't know how powerful your tape is, the, the one where you, where you read healing scriptures. He says, those healing scriptures are so powerful because it's the Word of God coming through them. He said, I put that tape on every night and I let the Word, let the Word, let the Word influence me. He said, I'm healed not because of communion. I'm healed especially because the Word was coming at me through your, through your mouth. He said, that music and that the Word, the Word, the Word. I'll never forget standing in Galilee when I, did, when, when I actually did that. I, I was reading every healing verse. And I could feel the power of God on me as I'm reading them. Well, that same power is, is available. My son tells me how he watches YouTube just to listen to my worship. He said, Daddy, he said, it's so powerful. He said, why don't you sing those songs again? They're so powerful. He said, when I, when I hear your, your music and your worship, I just don't want to do anything else. He said, I work out listening to your worship. I said, well, bless your heart, Josh. But the beauty is, it's the Word, people. It's the cross. Am I getting through to you? Yeah. The cross of Jesus. And, and you know, when, when we go to the Lord and like, okay, you can read the Bible and you see the cross in Exodus 15 and the cross in Numbers 16 and the cross in Numbers 21 and in Job and in the Psalms and in Isaiah, Jeremiah and the prophets. But, when, but, but after you read it, then you go back to your own little life and bang, 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 everything is forgotten. And, but if you have communion daily, you come face to face with it on a nightly or daily basis. That's why there's power there. And the healing part of God begins to affect you beautifully. I don't really need to pray for the sick if they'll just do that one thing. Think about, for this cause, many are sleeping. In Corinthians. For this cause, many are dying. For this cause, many are sickly among you. Because you have not really understood the work of Calvary. Because the church was coming to have a party and they were eating before the, you know, the, uh, 
the widows and the, and the orphans had the chance and such things were happening. And it was greed and selfishness going on. And Paul said, look, he said, for, for this cause many are dying. But, but he said, if we judge ourselves, God will not judge us with the world. So make yourself, make yourself a promise today. See what the Bible requires of you. Well, the first thing he requires of you is that you, you, you fill your heart with it. But then when you read it, what is it you need from heaven? What is it you're looking for? Well, in, in, in my case, I said, Lord, I need healing in my body. I need healing in my heart. I want you to heal my heart. I don't know why that problem came on me. I have no idea. Okay. I, I had no symptoms for so long and thought, let's keep going and kill ourselves and God will be able. Forget it. It's a pump. <laughs> it needs rest. Give your body what it needs. And as, you, as, as I was reading the scriptures, I said, Lord, I said, heal me. I want to be healed so I can serve you, so I can travel the world. And suddenly I began feeling strong. And dear Greg told me, he said, every day you look stronger on that camera. Every day you're looking better. Let me, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this to you. When I allowed the Holy Spirit to ignite the power that is residing in my soul, when I received the Word of God and the power of God was ignited and the engine came on, everything changed and I began looking at the Word and I said, Lord, what is it I'm missing? What is it I'm not doing right? And the Lord said, the cross. He said, get back to the cross. He said, to obey me in this matter with the children. And the Lord said this to me. He said, I move very fast when you do that. I move very fast when you do that. I will do it very quickly when you take care of those kids. Boy, I could not wait to get on the phone. Uh, and the Lord said one more thing to me, and with that I'm going to close. He said, I'm going to give you a new, an, uh, a new assignment. He said, your ministry is just, it's just starting. That's what, that's what he said to me. He said, the ministry is just beginning. But he said, I want you to focus now with all your heart on the church that's under persecution. Tell my people to pray for my people. Tell my people to pray for my church. So out of curiosity, I went uh, on YouTube and I began uh, looking at what's going on in Iraq and Syria, and my heart tore as I began listening to the most beautiful testimonies of the children of Christian families who are now in Jordan and in Syria, uh, in Iraq, I should say, that have fled to Kurdistan, some of them. And, and I'm reading this, and I'm thinking, dear God, i got to do something about it. ISIS is killing more Christians than the, than the government of, uh, of this country wants to talk about. They are killing Christians left and right in Iraq, destroying churches. Now as I'm talking, there is a, an evil force out there. Our president will not even talk about it. Shame on him. Our government will not address it. Shame on them. Precious brothers and sisters are getting killed for their faith. And the Lord said, speak it out. Talk about it. So I'm sending out a big letter in the next few days. So the Lord has given me two marvelous new assignments. Help those children and add to your list. I'm paying $38 a month to help those kids. That's nothing. 38 bucks a month 
times 25 comes to a thousand something, isn't it? Just a thousand bucks, or is it under that? 900 something, whatever. Just close to a thousand. I said, dear God, it's worth it to give a thousand dollars to help those, these, these orphans. Why not? And the Lord spoke and said, tell my people to do the same thing so I can bless them. Wow. Okay, Greg, it's all yours back there. Just real gentle and heavenly now back there. They, they just flew back from the UK, he and, and Marie. Because I ministered to the church in the UK a few days ago on Skype. I've preached to the people in the Ukraine and then the people in Prague. Oh, they were so precious. And I kept saying, if you can hear me, wave at me. They all were all waving. And then I preached two services in Prague, two services in London, and one big service in Ukraine with 10,000 people sitting in front of me. I want to I wanna ask God today to, to really make this so real to you. I know, you know, I didn't come tonight to preach and teach. I just came to talk. Did you enjoy that little talk? You know, I said, all, I said a lot of things tonight. But please, you know, let me just hit the headlines. Tomorrow morning, please wake up early and uh, go for a walk. And notice the flowers. Look at the grass, look at the trees, and just enjoy that beautiful moment with God. And thank Him for it. It'll do something to your day, I promise you. How many will do that? Come on, wave at me. Go for a walk. Harry Truman went for a walk every day and lived to be 90-something. Take a walk every day. If you can't every day, do it as often as you can. Take your wife with you, hold her hand, and just walk. Walk down that road you live on. My Jesse said, she, she, she said, Daddy, the most precious thing you did in that hospital is when you were walking around with your arms stretched out towards those in ICU, praying for them. I said, baby, you know, we don't talk. Oh, she said, Daddy, she said, this is a great story. She said, you were, you were stretching your hands like this and praying, oh, Jesus, heal them. She said, you know that that girl you, you prayed over right next door to you had 10% 10, 10 chance to survive? Did you realize, Daddy, that they were coming with helicopters on the roof with these people who had just been in accidents on the road? Because that hospital, that, that's where they bring them. They have a helicopter that comes right on top of that of that hospital, and they take him down quickly into, into ER. She said, Daddy, you were walking around praying that God would heal those people, holding on to your little walker deal. I said, yeah, baby, but she said, you don't know how it touched us. You don't know how it touched the nurses. That's, that's why they, they were weeping when, when you came by and hugged them. They were cheering you when you left. She said, Daddy, don't stop doing that. She said, you know, something has changed about you. I said, yes, baby. I see a beautiful world I did not realize was there. Everybody's beautiful now. Even ugly things are beautiful things. <laughs> no, seriously. Even things that, that never you, you never paid attention to are lovely. So lovely. These guys, you know, that walk with me, because two or three of them walk with me every day. They, they kind of stare at me like, wow, he's different. Well, you can't be the same when you face death. It's impossible. I said, guys, just stop a minute. Just stop. Look how the, the, this beautiful, beautiful plant is growing right here. I said, look at the beautiful colors on it. And one of them said to me, they said, well, I never noticed. I said, that's because, you know, you, we don't care to notice. I said, think about the peace it gives you. So, take a walk every day. Oh, dear God, help them take a walk. I'm going to make it so difficult for you. You're gonna, I'm going to make you sweat till you walk. You, you, you're going to walk, right? 
don't walk on your treadmill. Walk outside. <laughs> treadmill, all you see is whatever it is in that room. Take a walk on the beach. Take a walk in your neighborhood. Go see your neighbors. Give them cookies on the way. Or whatever you want to do. <laughs> Spend time with God. Life is so short. Don't waste it in bed. Did you hear what I said? Don't waste your life laying in a bed. There's so much to do out there. So much to see out there. Just get out. Do it. Enjoy the beauty of nature. And then get back to the house and read your Bible, even if it's half an hour. And every night, have communion. And watch what God will do with you tomorrow. Are you all there? Okay. Come on, lay your hands on your heart. I'm going to sing this song to the Lord with your hand on your heart. Oh, Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I see. Come on, tell him. Your face. Your eyes are on this child. Your grace, your grace abounds. To me. One more time. Tell him one more time. Oh, your beauty. Don't you feel that blessed anointing falling upon us? Your face is all I see. And when your eyes and when your eyes are on this child, this child Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, glorious Lord. Emmanuel, God is with us. Blessed Redeemer, Blessed Redeemer, Living Word, Jesus, name of our Lord, beautiful Savior, so beautiful. Jesus, what a wonder you are. You know, before we sing this to him, just lift your hands and thank him for being there for you. When nobody is there, he is there. When you think you're alone, he comes and says, I shall never leave thee nor forsake thee. So harmless, so gentle, so sweet. Come on, Gregory. Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are so gentle. You are so 
so pure and so calm so pure and so kind you shine like the bright morning sun every morning star Jesus What a wonder you are, Jesus, what a wonder you are, what a precious wonder you are, you are so gentle, so pure and so Jesus, you're the sweetest one of all. You lift me up every time I fall. Tell him, please, Gregory. Jesus, you're the sweetest name on And you're just the same. And you're just the same. As your lovely name. That's the reason why. That's the reason why I love you so. For Jesus, you're the sweetest name I know. Just gently. Jesus, you're the sweetest name. I know, and you're just the same as your lovely name. That's the reason why I love you so. For Jesus, you're the sweet. I know. Holy, 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 Lord God. Precious Jesus, precious Jesus, precious Jesus, precious Jesus. We're so glad you redeemed us. We're so glad that you redeemed us, precious Jesus. As we lift our hands. of our love, precious dream, precious dream. 
You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. All the glory. I sing praises to your name. I sing praises to your name. Oh, praises to your name. Oh, for your name is great and great. Sweetest name. Oh, praises to your name. Oh, for your name is great and great to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Dear Jesus, we feel your sweet presence here. And Lord, right now I pray for little Michael. Thanks and hope's precious gift from heaven. Would you please, please, sweet Jesus, 
walk into that room where he is now and lay your precious healing hand on him as you've done so many times healing the multitudes in Galilee in Jerusalem you were moved with compassion in Nain when you saw that casket and that man in it you were touched as the mother cried and you stood there and saw her cry and you spoke a mighty word and raised him from the dead I remind you Lord as you wept as you saw Mary and Martha weep you wept and raised her brother from the dead. How you love the woman with the issue of blood. Your word says, and he loved her and said unto her. You love that leper in Matthew chapter 8. And Jesus loving him said unto him, I will. You did it because of love. You healed because of love. Heal Michael because of love now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We place our arms around Lance and hope. Lord, we join our faith with their faith. That you promise to them will come to pass. Little Michael will be fine. His heart will be fine. The child shall live and live a long life in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your presence we feel in this room. Thank you for your touch on our lives. Thank you for your sweetness, your presence. Give you all the glory and all the praise. Bring us ever so much closer to you. Away from ourselves. Away from our sins. And confusion. In Jesus' precious name. That we might feast in your divine presence is our prayer. In your holy name we pray. God's people said do you, do, you, do you people feel that anointing here why don't you lift your hands and drink it in just let the Lord just feed you with it let's sit there and just drink it in let the Lord just touch you each one of us experiences the anointing in a, in a, in a, in a, in a different way you may be feeling something on your hands now or something down your body like the woman with issue of blood felt in her body that she was made whole. Imagine feeling in your body, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm well. Jesus, we surrender. Now give him that sickness and he'll heal it. Breathe upon me, breath of God, Gregory. Just gently, softly. A heavenly sound. Give him that sickness, people. Make that divine exchange with him. Give him your broken body for his whole body. Give him your brokenness and receive his wholeness. In Jesus' sweetest name. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Let's receive it now. Lift your hands and receive it now. Peace that passeth all understanding. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present or things to come, nor height or depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus the Lord. And he's able to keep you from falling and to present you before his throne blameless with exceeding joy. Only he can do it. To him belongs the majesty and the glory. And the saints sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, the Lamb. Great and marvelous are thy ways, Lord God Almighty, just and true. Who shall not fear thee, Lord? Or else should I? Fearful in praise is doing wonders. Bring us into your presence, away from ourselves and the misery and confusion of life, into that inner court, inner place of tranquility and peace. Don't allow us to waste any more time. No more waste. No more foolishness. Let us live our life to the full. Enjoy your beautiful creation. See the beauty all around us. Walk with you daily in sweet fellowship. Don't let that stop, Lord. Don't let that quit, Lord. Don't let anything come in the way. In Jesus' name. As your people begin to practice the Passover, the communion, as your people tonight or tomorrow begin to participate in your fellowship, in communion, let the cross become a reality in their life. Let the cross bring its shadow over them. Let the cross begin to influence their minds and affect the way they live until they recognize the power in it. Dear Jesus, if there was power in that piece of wood in Numbers 21, you said, whosoever looketh shall live. If a brazen snake can bring healing, how much more your blessed name. How much more your blessed cross. To you be all the glory and honor. Give you all the praise and all the blessings and all the thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.